An official investigation into the conduct of Home Secretary Priti Patel has found she is guilty of bullying her staff and therefore is in breach of the ministerial code. The ministerial code sets out the minimum standards required of a cabinet minister and convention is that if you've broken it, you have to resign. Every time in the past that someone has been found to break the ministerial code, they have resigned. Um, but, as we know, this is a government of firsts, and Boris Johnson has overridden the findings of the inquiry, and Judge Patel has no case to answer. The author of the report, who was the, you know, the independent investigator who was given the job of making this report, he has resigned because his recommendations have been ignored. Um, we're going to go through all of today's political fallout about this in one moment. First of all, though, I want to get you up to speed on what this is all about. Why, why was Priti Patel under investigation? What are the implications of it all? Um, so we need to go back to March for the start of this story. Um, that's because that was when Sir Philip Rutnam, who was the most senior civil servant in the Home Office, resigned very publicly on television. My experience has been extreme, but I consider there is evidence that it was part of a wider pattern of behaviour. One of my duties as Permanent Secretary was to protect the health, safety and well-being of our 35,000 people. This created tension with the Home Secretary and I have encouraged her to change her behaviours. I have received allegations that her conduct has included shouting and swearing, belittling people, making unreasonable and repeated demands, behaviour that created fear and needed some bravery to call out. Uh, it's a video which political journalists claim is, is um, you know, memorable because you never really have senior civil servants resigning live on TV. I think most people remember it for the guy holding the umbrella um, over his head throughout the, the interview. Um, anyway, after that resignation and the allegations surrounding it, an investigation was launched into Priti Patel for bullying. That was in March. Why has it taken so long? Um, for us to learn about the results, that's because the government were sitting on the report, um, partly under the premise that you know there was a pandemic to deal with, but also it's been rumoured um, that Dominic Cummings was using its release as a threat um, against Priti Patel to increase his his leverage over her. That seems to be the kind of guy he is. Um, anyway, last night, finally, a summary of the findings were released. The, the full document is still not being published, even though there are you know there are demands from um, people in the the standards commissions and the Labour Party to get it released. It won't be, but the summary is here. Um, it's by Sir Alex Allen. He concludes, my advice is that the Home Secretary has not consistently met the high standards required by the Ministerial Code of treating her civil servants with consideration and respect. Her approach on occasions has amounted to behaviour that can be described as bullying in terms of the impact felt by individuals. To that extent, her behaviour has been in breach of the Ministerial Code, even if unintentionally. Now, this is pretty clear. Priti Patel has broken the ministerial code. That's what he has judged. He was the person, the independent investigator, you know, who was given the job of, of finding out whether or not she had broken the ministerial code. He says she had. Now, there's obviously lots of pressure um, for her to resign. Matt Hancock, well, there was this morning, we now know the outcome, but this morning, Matt Hancock was the first person to go out to field questions. Um, about this, you know, surely she's going to have to resign. Here he is on BBC Breakfast. Um, he's asked a question in the abstract whether a breach of the ministerial code should mean that a minister resigns. Well, that is a, a judgment for the Prime Minister. Uh, what I'd say on this is that I've worked with Priti Patel a lot. I think she's an excellent Home Secretary. She's been nothing but uh, courteous and kind in all the dealings that I've had with her. Uh, and, and I know that she's absolutely focused on delivering the commitments that we've made to improve the safety of our streets across this country, for instance, by recruiting 20,000 extra police. Okay. Uh, and um, we've, we've already recruited more than 5,000 extra over the last year. So, you know, she's, she's working very hard on that agenda. I'm not, I'm not expecting you to comment on the character mm. of, of one of your colleagues. I, what I'm asking, I suppose, is... You are a member of the cabinet, you are a minister, and there is a ministerial code which you abide by. Would you feel comfortable sitting next to another minister who has been proven to have broken the ministerial code, still in the job? Well, that, that is a judgment for the Prime Minister, not for me. Uh, uh, and what I would say, though, is that uh, I feel very proud to serve in a cabinet with, uh, with Priti Patel. Uh, and I think that she's doing an, uh, uh, an excellent job 
and is an excellent Home Secretary and really delivering on the things that matter to people, the commitments that we made and on which we were elected. Uh, and um, uh, and I'm, I'm uh, uh, and as I say, in all the dealings I've ever had with her, uh, she's been nothing other than courteous. She can't be a workplace bully because she's always been nice to me. <laughs> you have the same seniority as her. You're another cabinet minister. The fact that she's nice to you does not mean she's nice to the people who work under her, um, which presumably Matt Hancock knows, but they're just taking the country for fools. Um, obviously, um, the pressure for Boris Johnson to sack Priti Patel, he found a way to avoid that. Um, and it was in a sort of characteristically Boris Johnson type fashion. He worked out um, that actually, formally, um, it's, his, it's his ultimate responsibility whether or not to find someone has or has not broken the ministerial code. So even though there's been a months long investigation by the person who was, uh, you know, works as Boris Johnson's specific advisor on ministerial standards, um, he can, as prime minister, he's the ultimate boss of Priti Patel, he can just overrule that. He can say, nope, I've read the report and I disagree. Um, no ministerial code was broken. Um, Priti Patel for her part, has at least said she's sorry. I'm sorry that my behaviour has upset people and I've never intentionally um, set out to upset anyone. I work with thousands of brilliant civil servants every single day and we work together day in, day out to deliver on the agenda of this government. And I'm absolutely sorry for anyone that I have upset. Um, I'm sorry for anyone that I have upset, not for anything she's done. Um, you will note um, Boris Johnson's controversial move to completely override and ignore um, the results of the independent investigation has led to the resignation um, of the author of that inquiry. That was Sir Alex Allen. I'm not surprised that a woman who takes extreme joy in uh, throwing people into cages, in calling Black Lives Matter protesters thugs, um, sending dinghies of desperate refugees back out into the sea um, is a bully. Um, I wish there was more focus on the impact of her terrorization and her, br her brutality um, on people whose names we will never know, um, rather than only, only when it happens to um, senior civil servants. You know, that is a, is a much bigger scandal um, to me. You know, the dramatic impacts that that has on, um, you know, physical health, on mental health, the breaking down of the spirit um, of individuals, of communities, the dehumanization that is wrought as a result of the policies that we see her enact. She has gotten away with huge amounts of not just cruelty, but pure corruption, whether it's voting against making the detention of pregnant women illegal, uh, using like anti-Semitic tropes around North London elites, this is stuff that she gets away with. Um, and it's the fact that she kind of, I'm all, it's almost somewhat reassuring to know that she lives out her politics um, in her everyday life in the form of, of being, uh, of, of taking sort of some kind of thrill in uh, dehumanizing the people around her. At least she's, she's non discriminatory in her assholery. <laughs> She's not just an asshole to, to people um, who are you know, overly policed or people who are trying to migrate to the UK. She's also an asshole to middle class civil servants in, in Westminster, although not to Matt Hancock, apparently. The workplace bullying angle I do think is important as well, because this isn't just something um, that applies to middle class people in, in Whitehall. Workplace bullying is an incredibly, you know, it's, it's a problem that you know, most people will understand on a, on a personal level. It can ruin lives. Um, and sort of the dismissal of it and in the fashion that the Conservatives have done, which is just to say, well, she's nice to me, I do think does, you know, does have lasting damage. I want to, for you know, the sake of, of fairness, point out that in um, this report, there were some sort of mitigating factors which were cited. And that's what the government are using to say, look, yeah, she might have broken the ministerial code, but you've got to focus on, focus on the mitigating factors, focus on those. So we will read those there. This is also from um, the summary of the, you know, the findings of that inquiry. Um, so Alan writes, there is no evidence that she was aware of the impact of her behaviour and no feedback was given to her at the time. The high pressure and demands of the role in the Home Office, coupled with the need for more supportive leadership from the top of the department, has clearly been a contributory factor. In particular, I note the finding of different and more positive behaviour since these issues were raised with her. Um, Tory MPs have been really focusing on that line about the need for more supportive leadership within 
um, the Home Office. So you'll have lots of MPs coming out saying, we know how difficult the civil service are. Um, she was probably just um, responding to people who were fairly obstinate and not doing what she said. The report did say that, that people could have been more responsive to her than, than they were, been more flexible were the words they used. Um, but others have suggested that, you know, this is saying, oh, she's only broken the ministerial code and there's all these mitigating factors, so maybe we should just accept it. But former permanent secretary at the Treasury gives us a different and I think useful perspective. He's saying that the bar to have broken the ministerial code is actually pretty high. Um, so this guy used to be the top civil servant at the Treasury, Nick McPherson. He tweets, two thoughts of the day, bullying at work is never justified. It can cause huge misery for those affected and their families. In my experience, things have to be very bad indeed for a cabinet office inquiry to find fault in a minister. The system is rigged to conclude the contrary. I think that point's very important um, because people will wonder, how, ca how can it be the case that the prime minister, who clearly has a political interest in saving his home secretary, is the final arbiter when it comes to whether or not someone has, has broken this? And the person who's writing the initial report is himself and fundamentally an employee of the, the prime minister, not in, indirectly because they're a civil servant, they're a top civil servant in the employ of, of Her Majesty's government. So you might think this was always rigged from from the outset and this top civil servant is suggesting that probably is how you should look at it. So even if they say, yeah, she broke it, but there's some mitigating factors, the bit that's surprising there is that this report came to her having broken it. Err on the side that it's worse than what was said in the report than that it was better than what was said in the report, basically. Um, and here, when it comes to this issue of workplace bullying, saying if she bullied people, they probably deserved it, or maybe it was just people being overly sensitive. Um, the person pushing back against this most heavily, probably, um, is the representative of people who work in the civil service. This is Dave Penman. I'm speaking earlier. He's General Secretary of the FDA. So that's one of the civil service unions. What is the point of the ministerial code then? What is the point of the investigation? If actually what we're saying is it doesn't matter what evidence is found, it doesn't matter what the Prime Minister's own advisor on the ministerial code says, if it is politically convenient for the Prime Minister to ignore it, he will ignore it. He's also Minister for the Civil Service. Let's be clear, this investigation has found that the Home Secretary bullied her staff. That's the conclusion that the Prime Minister's advisor on the ministerial code uh, has reached, including shouting and swearing at civil servants. The Prime Minister, in his foreword to the ministerial code, said there will be no bullying and no harassment. He didn't mean it. Those words are hollow now. What message does it send, not just to civil servants in the Home Office, but across the civil service, if you want to raise a complaint against the minister about their behaviour, the outcome of that will depend on the politics that's happening at the time. That's the clear message to civil servants from the prime minister. It's a very powerful point there. You're saying if, if you complain against your boss, if it's not politically convenient for your boss to face consequences, then the government will completely ignore it. Um, I think probably, though, more unedifying than the fact that Priti Patel hasn't resigned is the way Tory MPs are justifying it. And we've seen all sorts of tweets um, which basically take this format. We're going to start by going to Andrea Ledsom. She says, I have known Priti Patel for many years as a friend and colleague. Yes, she's strong and forthright in her views, which is one of her great assets. I have never seen her bully anyone. She is also empathetic and incredibly kind. Now, you know, you could imagine, I think this would be distasteful to sort of say when the allegations were first made. Um, as I've said already, I don't think whether or not you are a workplace bully has much to do with whether or not you're nice to people who are, you know, your equals when it comes to levels of, of authority. Often the worst bosses are really, you know, brown nosy to the people above them. Um, so, so the fact that a boss is nice to you, very powerful person, doesn't necessarily mean they're nice to the people that work under them. But also, yes, I've never seen her bully anyone. This is basically not just saying, look, she might have behaved badly, but she's also a nice person, maybe we should treat her sympathetically. This is outright just denying that what was in the report is in the report. They say, oh, they found that she's guilty of bullying. I haven't seen it, so I don't believe it. It's like this person had the official role to do this independent investigation and they were tasked with doing it by your government. It's not like a, a, an external organization that have come in. It's not like the Guardian have done an investigation into Priti Patel. It is the person whose job is to do that investigation who works under Boris Johnson. Um, the other one is IDS. Apparently, he's been sort of rallying the troops to come out with, with tweets like this. Um, so he wrote, I've worked with Priti Patel for a number of years and always found her to be strong, robust and determined to get the job done. She's a hardworking and good home secretary. There is a history of poor civil service leadership at the home office and the report is critical of that. Yes, the report is critical of that. The report also says that Priti Patel is a bully. 
um, which is the part of the report you are ignoring. One of the problems here, I think, is, is the fact that there's no gray area when you have this sort of zero tolerance policy. If you've broken the code, you have to resign. And that means the government either have to say you're sacked or you didn't break the code. And I think in this situation, Prince Patel should just be sacked, obviously. But I wouldn't really have minded if Boris Johnson had come out and said, look, she's clearly done some things wrong. But the report also said she's her behavior has improved over the past six months. And the report also sort of noted that this was a difficult situation. So while what happened was obviously wrong, um, absolute solidarity to anyone who who was who was bullied and she's going to do some training, etc., um, I think we should keep her in a job because of all her benefits. Obviously, I don't think she has many benefits in that job, but he does. Um, but they have instead said, nope, she didn't bully. Nope, not bullying. She was nice to me. She's not a bully. And it's, it's exactly the same as with Dominic Cummings. If they had said about Dominic Cummings, look, he broke the rules. That's um, terrible. And we condemn that in the strongest possible terms. He's getting a massive telling off. But ultimately, um, we still are going to keep him in the job because we believe in second chances, et cetera, et cetera. I would have thought that was a bit weak, you know, because the rule he broke was so audaciously bad, but well, it was audaciously bad to break it in the way that he did. But if they had said that, I would have at least had a bit of respect for it. Instead, what they said is they said, nope, he hadn't broken a rule. You know, they just lied to us. So if they had been honest and saying, look, we're not going to fire them because we want them to have a second chance or, we, you know, we, we, we're taking into account the mitigating circumstances, fine. But don't stand up to the public and say, no, nope, a bully is not a bully. She, she might have been found guilty of bullying, but she's nice to me. Ah, yes, we might have evidence that he broke all of the lockdown rules, but I've, he didn't. <laughs> that was basically what they said. It's this sort of habit that this government have of kind of gaslighting the public, of just saying, what's, what's the case is not the case because that's the way they get the outcome they want.